my business scaled four to five X. I got it to, I think it was a quarter million a month. That trajectory of growth is a lot. And if you don't have a solid foundation, it's gonna break. We have an integrated feminine and an integrated masculine. I do sprints. I call it soft girl season, and then I call it daddy season. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be like soft and in my daddy season at the same time. I'm gonna be a soft daddy. I love that. <laughs> love a soft daddy. Life isn't about filling up your bucket all the way. It's about really blocking all the holes. Like what's leaking your energy? It's either bringing you life or it's not. I am the creative visionary of this business. If I'm not protecting my creative energy, I'm doing the business a disservice. It's this Amazonian powdered tobacco blend and you snort it. Everything about I was gonna that say, sounds this, sketchy. <laughs> this is gonna sound like, wait, you do what? Let's avoid the word snort. <laughs>
I needed to manage a big ass team. Yeah. I mean, and I realized too, I'm like, I love people. I love humans. And I don't want to be managing that many people. I don't want to be managing that many clients. So it took me a long time to kind of take a pause, burn everything to the ground, and then take a moment to evaluate, like, what do I actually want? And then also, where's that intersection of what I'm good at and what I like doing? Mm -hmm. And how can I really stick to that? Mm -hmm. And then I built my business and my role around that versus this paradigm of success that I'd only seen modeled around other people. Like, mm. look at her, look at the type of business she runs. Cause you and I, we run in the same circle. Like a lot of our girlfriends, like they're like beasts yeah. in the best way. Yeah. Uh, with the we say that respectfully. <laughs> with respect. <laughs> with their businesses. Yeah. And I think for me for a while, I was like, oh shit, I want to get to where she is. Mm -hmm. Or I want that kind of business when I didn't really have that many insights into like my own imprint of mm. what I actually want or what I like doing. If yeah. That makes sense. It makes so much sense. And I feel like I have been on a similar journey of noticing where I'm basing my next benchmark off of someone else's definition of success instead of my own and coming back to getting to know myself more, getting to know my, even my human design, mm -hmm. like how my energy flows. I love people as well, but I but I also don't actually desire to have a huge team. So following someone else's imprint of I'm going to scale this company to sell it, I'm probably yeah. not going to do that. Yeah. And that's OK. But can I find an expander, a model of someone who's doing it in the way that I want to? So I want you to take me to that moment, though. Was there a moment where you realized like, oh, this is it either broke, like it's either broken and I can't keep doing it this way? Or did you have the intuition to start scaling it back before it actually hit that point? No, I think shit had to hit the fan. Yeah. And I think that just... Tell me that about it. <laughs> tell me more. I think that's just how I operate because this has also happened to me in relationships. Mm. I've been in relationships that I know I need to get out of, but then there's, <laughs> <Haven't> some, <we> all? <laughs> there's comfort and chaos for me. And that's also awareness that I've now picked up on and the fact that I was born in a war zone. So there's a part of my nervous system that finds safety and solace within chaotic situations. So for me, I was just like, cerebrally, I was like, oh, this is a lot, this, this is too much. And also my body liked it. So at the time, this was like four or five years ago, I didn't have the awareness to be like, oh shit, I'm starting. It's like, you know, God will start tapping you and being yep. like, mm, you should maybe deviate, deviate, deviate until like you get a bitch slap. So my bitch the, slap, the universal bitch slap. Yes, we've all had it. I think my bitch slap wasn't really one thing. It was just my health started deteriorating. My cortisol levels, my adrenals were shot. I had, you know, my gut. I was always just, I was inflamed. I look at photos of myself mm. back then and it wasn't a weight thing, but my entire body was just inflamed. Yeah. And I remember yeah. starting to think it was normal for me to just get exhausted in the middle of the day. Mm. Like I just thought that was normal. Like, oh, I'm working. Right. And I also was in a relationship at the time. And even that relationship was certainly not aligned. And I think my my needing to work so much was an escape from that relationship. And then it also, it was like a shitty cycle. The level in which I worked also made the relationship a lot more distant as well. Mm -hmm. So I think all, you know, I kind of did a little audit of my life and I was just like, I need to get out of this relationship. Yeah. And also I need to, I need to just return back to normalcy. But before I could make that decision, I think it was just the the way the business operate was operating was just not sustainable and mm -hmm. I, at that point i was like i need just need to start letting go of team members and that broke my heart yeah but as soon as i did that it was just like a breath of fresh air and i was like wait yeah it's actually really nice operating with a smaller team mm. i want to go back to something you said because i think this ended up being a part of the conversation going on within our community right now because i am there i'm in this transition phase where i'm learning a lot about my nervous system and deeper patterns that I I could see the symptoms of them, but I wasn't addressing the root. What you said was you were literally born in a war zone. And even like the way you were operating was it's very celebrated in our world. It's it's something that until you get to that point where you're like, wait a minute, why am I more comfortable with chaos than I am with peace? And you realize that there's another option. 
you can start to go down the road and it's such a long road of figuring out and unwinding that pattern at a nervous system level to then create something different for yourself. So where did that process start for you? Like tangibly, what did you start to do to root your nervous system? And I wonder, I don't even know, like, where are you at today with it? Like, do you still find yourself going back to chaos because it feels more comfortable or have you really rewired that? Yeah, I think I... I absolutely still have moments where I catch myself Mm -hmm. in small scenarios at being like, oh, this is my old way of being Mm because it's almost like the level, like just the different layers of like of competence. It's like I think you can be at that at where I was a few years ago. I was on I had this this sense of unconscious incompetence. And then you don't even know what you don't know. Yeah. Now I think my default is more uh, conscious incompetence. Yeah. Like when I have those moments, I'm like, oh, shit, I know what this is and I can do what I can to move out of it. Yeah, it's so relatable. I feel like I'm coming out of unconscious incompetence into more conscious incompetence. And it's deep. It's like, because then I see it in every area of my life. These patterns that I have that I realize I want to shed aren't just in my business. They're in Mm -hmm. relationships. It's it's all the same. It's all the same. It's all a mirror for our internal world. So how did that then transition to the work that you, you still have your agency, you're just one of the most creative, like you as the visionary, but also just your agency, like just produces some of the dopest work in like in our space in terms of like branding and websites. But then you've really expanded to express more of this side of yourself and this passion. So how did that start? Yeah. So um, uh, a couple years ago, um, you know, I kind of I went through and I reorganized my business. And then I also uh, I also just infused more sustainable like I diversified our revenue streams Mm -hmm. and I made it so that way I wasn't just pushing in trading time for money with my team Mm -hmm. so that was step one and as soon as I figured out the secret sauce for that then I was like okay I can kind of breathe a little bit that's managed on its own I can I can come in and be creative director when I need to and be uh, like chief of hype and everything. Yeah. And then so now I have this this time and a, a big part of that um, was pouring more love into my my process and my unraveling. Mm. And uh, during that process, I went through and I did a somatic practitioner training. I also did a somatic breath work. A certification mm. as well. And I didn't do those things so I could professionally offer these things or be mm. a professional breathwork coach. I did it to deepen my own practice mm-hmm. and really fall into that. Yeah. And upon doing that, I it, that really opened up a lot for me. And since then, I've just been thinking about ways that I can support other women, especially creatives who are kind of stuck at the place that I was in a few years ago mm. and really want to build that business that they're not really trying to like scale or sell or anything like that, but they're trying to create something that's going to work within Mm -hmm. their lives and not the Mm -hmm. other way around Mm -hmm. and how to really tend to themselves first. Yeah. Okay. So how do we even begin that process? Cause you know, I'm thinking about you and I, and just women that we know, it's not a conversation you can really entertain until you're ready. Absolutely. Yeah. And because that's what it is. It's contrast. A lot Mm -hmm. of times like people need to feel the contrast of what does not feel good. And it's kind of like it's what we were talking about a couple of minutes ago before we started recording. It's a sense of awareness that you need to really capture within yourself. And rather than looking and comparing and being like, oh, look at this person's life or look at this person's business or look at this person's relationship. I want that. But really determining like, okay, who are you? What's your own energetic imprint? What drains you? What gives you energy? What what lights you up? It's almost like, bless your heart. I think the the amount that like when you record a lot of podcasts in one day, I would not be able to do that. I like for me, the way that I even operate within my team is I don't schedule consecutive meetings. If I have to yeah. speak for more than an hour, I know the quality of my words drastically suffers so I create buffers within myself but I'm different than you we're two completely different Mm -hmm. humans something that might be more neutral for me or maybe even give me energy might be a drain for you yeah so it's all about it's literally about doing an audit and Mm -hmm. and finding that out within yourself and kind of like you're mentioning too it's like looking look at your human design you know look at your own flavor of inquiry about really recognizing who you are you know it's this could be something that you 
uh, look into in therapy. Mm -hmm. It could be something that you look into just within finding your own tools and looking at what you're doing and seeing how that affects your energy or astrology, human design, any of those things. Mm. I remember you're kind of like flashing me back to the first mastermind I ever did before you and I met in a mastermind. We did this exercise and it was kind of in the realm of helping us to see where we could be outsourcing things within the business. But it was this simple exercise of this blank sheet of paper with a calendar, a blank calendar, and going through and actually jotting down every single thing we did throughout the day, personal Mm. and business. And then at the end of the week, and you could do it at the end of the day, I guess, actually going back through and circling the things that gave you life and drawing a red ass bright line through the things that brought you death or lit. And that's so such a stark contrast, but it is, it's like, it's either bringing you life or it's not, or it's draining your energy. It's draining your creativity, especially you work with creatives. It's like our creativity, my intuition is my highest superpower. I am the creative visionary of this business. If I'm not protecting my creative energy, I'm doing the business a disservice. Mm. And something I had to wrestle with, I'm curious if you had your own version of this, I had to really wrestle with this feeling of guilt that the things I was outsourcing to other people were things that I didn't enjoy, right? So they were things that I was like, ugh, that task. And feeling like, this sense of, oh, does this make me like I'm too good to do this task that I'm outsourcing it to someone else? I think a lot of like my conditioning growing up was very much like hardworking, you know, all those things. So what did you have to really sift through in terms of like the blocks, the subconscious programming that were keeping you stuck in a way of operating that just didn't serve you? Yeah. So I it's funny, actually, Chris Harder supported me with this because mm-hmm. I was the same. I remember a few years ago, I was at a point where I wouldn't even I, like it. I, I was making money, but I mm-hmm. wouldn't even Postmate something. I'd be like, oh, why? What? Like, I'll just go pick it up or I, I would do things myself until Chris really made it clear for me. He kind of like he made the whole process very objective. He was like, OK, if this task takes you 15 minutes, that's a quarter of an hour. And you're like internal hourly rate is a thousand bucks. Like, why would you not outsource it if it's not something you enjoy? Like instead focus your energy on something that I don't even want to say revenue producing activities, but something that lights you up, something that makes you happy or something that gives you spaciousness. So Mm -hmm. that way you can be a better human later on. So that was a big rewiring thing for me. And now I outsource everything. I delegate everything. Like it's my job. <laughs> yes. That is my it number is. one job is delegating <laughs> actually is, yeah. things that aren't my job. Okay. So when you're working with women, take us into the process of like, where are the, the places where you see from an outside perspective, people get in their own way. They drain their creative energy. They just make their life and business so much harder where they don't need to. Cause you're, you're quite literally speaking to your own demographic and also me. I am your, I am also your demographic. <laughs> Bring us into like some awareness of things we can start to notice, whether it is like noticing what drains us and then having that conversation. Well, why am I not outsourcing this? What's the belief underlying it? Take me into your process a little bit. Yes. And and also w- when it comes to the outsourcing thing, I think anytime you start a new venture, like let's mm-hmm. say you and I start a business tomorrow, mm-hmm. we'd be rolling. Which up could our, happen. Which very at well dinner tonight. could happen. Yes. <laughs> we could like I am a big fan of you and I rolling up our sleeves. Totally. Understanding the understanding the SOPs, the business, and then over time when it makes sense delegating things, you know, I think that in the beginning, it's certainly fine to do things yourself. And it's actually pretty beneficial to to just understand your business. And I think what I see quite often with women is I see a pendulum swing. I see very sharp and actually, and I very intentionally create this within myself too. I do sprints. I call uh. it soft girl season and then I call it daddy season. I go from <laughs> the one masculine or the other. energy, yes. right? Yes. Like let's go and get shit done. Yes. I love and this. I lo- that to me, I like being in extremes because mm-hmm. I don't think one all the way is super sustainable. And I'm mm-hmm. also a fan, like you as a human, me as a human, we have an, un- we have an integrated feminine and an integrated masculine. Yeah. And what I've seen is oftentimes women think that straight off the bat, they need to be in their hyper masculine to create, to force, to hustle, to do all these things. And then they get burnt out. Yeah. Whereas I, and I've been there. 
absolutely have been there. And what I'm starting to realize is I, I thrive within some, some confines of structure. So like having some sort of masculine structure, Mm -hmm. not so much in my personal life, but within my business allows me to really thrive in my like creative and my feminine once I have that. So that's why like, for instance, an example of structure would be like your calendar, your schedule, having work blocks. And in my personal life, because I have that within, within my business, I hate I hate like making plans or structure or like Mm. Google invites to things. I'd rather just flow with it. But within, within my business, Mm. I, it allows me to really thrive in that. Yeah. So that's kind of one, I think as humans, we have the integration of both, but then Mm -hmm. I like to take a step back and be, be, and be like, all right, for the next two weeks or the next two months, like which season do I want to be in? Because I know operating in one way, 365 days a year is going to burn me out. Like either I'm Mm. not going to be moving the needle or I'm going to be burning myself out eventually. That's such a great way to look at it. It's like, again, kind of throwing that term balance to the wayside and really looking at more holistically of well, what does this look like to integrate it really in a life where I do have a business mm-hmm. and I do have goals and I have ambition. I have that part of me that I love. I don't want to abandon that part of me. But is it, if I'm being honest, sustainable to be in that mode all the time? No. Does it feel good to be in that mode all the time? No. I actually would love to hear more of like the journey of these somatic tools that you've used and you, you're certified in, you know, you do facilitate experiences now, but like you said, you did them more for your own personal practice. When did that come into the picture and what has it provided you in terms of benefits or just your life being better? It was about five years ago that mm. uh, I got recommended a therapist when I was I was living back here in L.A. And um, this therapist happened to be a somatic therapist. And right now I feel like somatics and embodiment, there's such buzzwords. And I don't think a lot of people are really clear at the root of it. But honestly, it's just like having awareness of your body. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be these very like niche tools that you use. Yeah, yeah. And I learned that from working with this therapist. Uh, we did a lot of talk therapy, but then he'd have me process a lot of those emotional experiences through my body and really shed light on those. And around the same time, uh, have you heard of the, the Hoffman process? Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't went, been though. So I did that. Um, actually, I was I was with Natalie Ellis. I was at dinner with her and Steven and he had just came back from it. And the way he shared his experience, I was just like, this sounds really dope. So I got, I signed up for the wait list and I got in a couple months later and that had a lot of somatic tools and a mm. lot of just introspection and just really processing things within your body. So that was like a, a, a full week of just being in that experience and being really guided through it. And then also uh, it was probably, I think close, close to six, seven years ago that I took my first breath work. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the first time you actually took breath work, like mm-hmm. lying down, mm-hmm. fuck me up breath work? Mm-hmm. So, okay, the first time I <laughs> that did level, it, yes. <laughs> the first time I did it, I was just like, oh, breath work. Like this will yeah. be like, it's Reading, like yoga, cool. it's breathing, meditating, Yay, fun. No, <laughs> actually the first time I did it, I, I went with one of my girlfriends and we just laughed uncontrollably the whole time, mm. which is, a, which is a, a common, actually I, the first time I did it, laughter was the emotional release that I, I remember being so surprised, but I just went with it. It's a purge. Mm-hmm. Yawning is a purge. Mm-hmm. Laughing yeah. is a purge. That's one of those very interesting ways that your body expresses energy too. So yeah, that I, I remember I, I had stacked that. I started seeing the therapist. I did Hoffman and that was around the same time that I started diving into plant medicine ceremonies. So I just kind of did all these things that really woke me up. And then with that, I just started gaining awareness into my physical state while I'd be working, while I'd be out socializing, while I'd be in partnership and just and, and starting to tune more into my body. Because prior to that, you know how people talk about like your instincts and what's your gut telling you? I always felt so disconnected from it. It's as easy as just literally just like giving yourself space throughout the day to like get reacclimated with your body. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be as easy as just even do do you do you meditate? Do you have I've used different meditation practices all throughout like the last 10 years. And yeah, I mean, just like that stillness was a lot of my introduction into this world too. Yeah. And I think for a while, meditation 
can sound very, um, it can sound very intimidating. And I think for me, I, I have such an active brain mm-hmm. <laughs> that I never fully Hi, being a creative. <laughs> yes, I can never fully master it. And um, it wasn't until I started learning breath work, not the uh, longer breath work ceremonies, but the more integrative breath work practices like Tumo breathing, Wim Hof, um, mm-hmm. the quicker ones. So then there's like the down regulating uh, breath. Like mm-hmm. You could do box breathing. Uh, you could do physiological sigh. That's we, we can do some when we're done recording to kind of like transition from one state to what we're yeah. doing tonight. There's the down regulating and then there's the up regulating Wim Hof, Tumo, um, Breath of Fire. Mm-hmm. Those will mm-hmm. give you quick bursts of energy if you need two to three minutes. And then there's like the laid down um, hol- holotropic uh, somatic breath work. And that just accesses altered states. Mm-hmm. For me, I noticed the qu- either the, the quicker bits of breath work, those allow me to meditate after. Yeah. And to me, I don't like the structure around meditation. Like I've tried the TM, I've tried the apps. Sometimes I just wake up and I just fucking sit there. Yeah. Sometimes. And sometimes that's like the most powerful meditation for me is just when I first wake up, when my brain is kind of in that like asleep, awake, like just coming back to the real world and just sitting in silence and taking some deep breaths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been powerful. And there, what am I, this is kind of a tangent, but one of my good girlfriends, she's really into dream processing. And she oh, actually told me I'm this thing. I'm fascinated by that world. Same. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to, I'll send you a couple of okay. resources she gave me, but you basically, you, your, your subconscious becomes alive in your dreams. And something she taught me as well is that you're able to like do a lot of pattern and interrupts within Mm. your dreams and certain weeks I just tell myself I'm like I'm gonna remember my dreams this week because otherwise I don't I'm the same yeah yeah I just go through phases I like either don't think about it or I very consciously I'm like all right I'm gonna really gonna do some dream work tonight yeah and you lose around 75 percent of your memory of your dreams as soon as you get out of bed so that's okay. a great opportunity. You know, when you're laying in bed, you're kind of yep. like, that's a good opportunity to be like, okay, I just had this dream about this thing, like, and then unraveling it. Yeah. And um, I actually did Dave Asprey's uh, neurofeedback retreat. Oh, I saw that. So dope. I saw Oh my gosh. Your One of the Instagram coolest stories. things I've ever done. So it was basically a week long where you're yeah. in these sensory deprivation pods and you have these um, sensors on your brain that are tracking your alpha, theta, delta, gamma okay. brain waves and help, allowing you to tap into alpha a lot quicker, which is what you want. Like right now, this is alpha state. Yep. When you're at the gym, you might be at alpha state. When you're yep. wor- in deep work, that's alpha. And then also gamma, that's like, gamma is really like heart coherence. Yeah. Uh, so it, it you go through certain practices and you get you get feedback, audio feedback to know when you're in alpha, when you're in right oh, left brain coherence cool. to allow you to sit within those states. That actually sparked a lot within me to learn more about these brain waves, but in the morning, that's why like I, I have my phone in and I keep it in the kitchen and I have it on do not disturb for the first two hours I'm awake because yeah. the quicker you get on your phone or even the quicker, you know, if you're with a partner or friend where you have a conversation, you're out of those like mm. really juicy morning brainwave states and you go straight into alpha or high beta mm. and the more you're, you go from like delta theta gamma in the yep. mornings yep. and the more you can stay down here the more you can tune into your intuition the more you mm. can tune into your body so I actually have this agreement with like Sarah Pendrick and I we she stays at my house a lot I stay at hers and yeah. we have this thing where in the morning when we wake up we just don't talk you don't and you just like have this yeah unspo- we like make, unspoken agreement literally yeah <laughs> We make there? coffee together. We sit together, but we just don't yeah. jam and yeah. we just stay in that state. So yeah. for me, it's like there's so much magic in that state. Mm-hmm. I don't really need to do anything with it, but that's yep. like a good a good place to have awareness. Yeah, I intuitively that's my default and I like to intentionally wake up earlier than anyone that I'm around so I can have that uninterrupted time. One of the most like requested topics always for us to talk about is like morning routine. So so, since we're kind of on this topic of like the ideal morning, you are someone who like has researched a ton. You found your own practice. What are some of the other things that really set you up to be your most creative, most productive self? No matter if you're doing a like a what was your your dad, if you're in daddy (laughs) Daddy mode. (laughs) <laughs> daddy season or soft girl season and and are the morning routines different depending on the season 
Yeah, so uh, I just want to preface everything by saying I'm an 80-20 bitch. I could be a complete degenerate or I could be like <laughs> on top of it. I have my morning routine. I wake up early and then other times I'm like up at 2 a.m. on my phone. Just a sloth. Playing with my nunchucks. <laughs> yeah, like I just do I just do what I want to do, right? I love this. <laughs> and that actually, that encapsulates your personality perfectly. <laughs> like I have certain Proceed. friends that literally call me out on it. Like I'll send them a reel and it'll be like 1 a.m. They'll be like, bitch, what are you doing? I thought you were like optimistic optimization ho what do you do yeah is it like why <laughs> but that just that's how I roll mm-hmm. but uh when I'm on top of my stuff I, I'm actually not really a morning person I think like an early morning for me is like 7 38 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and I just I just disconnect from my phone as much as I can at, at the very least an hour or two yeah and then mine is pretty simple right now because my ex was very dogmatic with his mornings and I think being in that with him just made me want to break free from that and not uh, makes so total yeah. sense yeah so uh, f- currently the two things that are very important to me is just not having stimulation giving myself myself time and space so like the morning before going through and like sending out slack messages if I need to just like getting things out of me so that way I don't feel a sense of urgency you do that the night before correct the day before okay yeah and then um and then I try to go outside as quickly as I can Same, to get yeah. to get a little bit of sun, a little bit of sun, a little bit of grass. I make a non-caffeinated beverage in mm-hmm. the morning too. Mm-hmm. So I'll just like, blend. I just do like a, it's, it's different every day, just different nootropics. That's actually, milk. I told you how I love to like stalk your Instagram stories. <laughs> and like when you're showing me the full stack, I'm like, screenshotting and then looking everything up so i mean anyone who wants to follow oh my along, gosh you know yeah. what made me so happy if we had a sleepover one day and i made you a morning drink um let's do it <laughs> is this an official invitation yes okay great it's happening <laughs> um and then the the one thing that i've actually been trying to I, I think i'm gonna have a little season of pausing from this for a little bit is have you heard of uh amazonian rape or hape before yes yeah I did it with, um, so I worked with a mentor. It was like a sound healing, like six months. And I always had the option whether or not I wanted to include that. And sometimes I did and other times I didn't, but it, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Depending on the blend. Yeah. So I do hop every Do you want to like, would you want to like explain for people who don't know what that is? Cause (laughs) it was new to me and I was like, sure, why not? I'm game. But yeah. And and I don't know about you, but it's so Basically, hape rape, it's this Amazonian powder tobacco blend. And you snort it, basically. So like, that just sounds very sketchy. Everything I was going to say sounds sketchy. I'm going to have you explain it. And then I'm like, maybe not. Because yeah, this is going to sound like, wait, you do what? Let's avoid the word snort <laughs> powder. <laughs> avoid that for so, the algorithm. Yes. <laughs> so um, I remember I was with two of my guy friends like three, four years ago. And I've never smoked a cigarette before. I'm not really a, I'm not a tobacco person. And um, we were about to do some yoga and they're like, oh, we're about to do some hop Do you want to try it? And I was just like, sure. The moment that one of them facilitated a little bit for me, I had never felt anything like this, but it was just like waves of tension just releasing from my body. Mm-hmm. And it's actually something that I like to do to transition from different states. So mm-hmm. after the work day, I'll do a little hop A and that transitions me into the evening. Or mm. after a social situation, I'll do a hop, I'll do a little bit of hop A and then that transitions me into the evening. Sure. But yeah. in the morning, I do a tiny amount and that just allows me to just really sit and like tune in mm. more than I, it's like a little, it's like a little nudge to get me there quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Like some people shoot espresso. Yeah. You just shoot hop <laughs> it's my it's espresso. Fine. It's fine. It's great. Okay, so like for someone who's listening to this and like we kind of just went to the extreme of you've built these practices over time. If someone is like the the kind of woman who you work with, they find you when they're like, okay, I'm ready. I know something needs to shift. What are like the first one to three micro changes that people can start to incorporate into their into their day? It could be an awareness practice that can help them start to shift into this way of operating that you found now where you've swung the pendulum one way and now you're finding just the authenticity it's not even balance like forget balance but Mm -hmm. I can just feel it in your energy yeah um so I think from just from a vitality standpoint so something I've always been a massive geek when it comes to human optimization yeah it's just something that is inherently just very important for me and then I, I dated a professional athlete a few years back and he would just do 
taught like best of the best biohacking stuff, best, you know, he worked with, I'm not sure, sure if you're familiar with like Dr. Andy Galpin. Gosh, I'm such a hoe for Andy Galpin. I'll send you, um, I'll send you like <laughs> if he's his listening. work. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a professor and he does a lot of work with like, mm-hmm. basically works with athletes to optimizing mm-hmm. their energy, mm-hmm. but it's all stuff that we could apply to date. It's just yeah. very science backed. It's yeah. like, a, it's like a different version of Huberman, like him and Huberman sure. are like same, same yeah. flavor. So I learned a lot about the extreme from that and then applied things to my own life. So now mm-hmm. my week, like dur- over, during the weekends when I'm kind of looking ahead at my week, I'm like, okay, what's my week looking like? What's going on with work? I literally anchor everything around energy practices for mm-hmm. me. And right now that tends to be exercising and walking. Mm-hmm. So every mm-hmm. day, the first thing I do is I'm like, huh, do I feel like this week, what's going to give me energy if I get in strength training or boxing or a walk in the middle of the yeah. day, first thing in the morning or at night, what's yeah. going to feel better? And then I lay everything else around that. And I tell my team too, if they mm-hmm. block, if they request something, I'm like, no, I'm training during this time yeah. because, and I've, I give all of them context as well, because the more I'm tuned into that version of me, or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm able to really expend that energy. I be, I perform better afterwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think the first place is really getting, getting your own flavor of your movement practices, mm-hmm. and then also nutrition. And I do think a lot of things we could do to optimize our health and our well being are free. Like ninety nine percent of it is free. I I do a lot of things. They're really weird and honestly not even necessary because I like getting that one percent but you can get up to the 99 percent by getting good quality sleep getting vitamin d good quality remineralized water eating well for your physiology Mm -hmm. and then also exercising for your physiology not what I do not what you do but like for you so how can you really pick up on those tools Mm -hmm. to do that and then another part of that is I do think on the business side is just setting up systems, setting up systems and getting the support team required. So that way it's not an energy leak from you. Yeah. Because I think life isn't about filling up your bucket all the way. It's about really blocking all the holes, like what's leaking your energy mm, and doing an so audit of good. your life. Is it these things you're doing repetitively within your business? Is it the relationship? Is it the friendship? Is it, what is it in your life that's pulling from you? How do you gain that awareness? And then how do you listen to those little nudges instead of waiting for the bitch slap? (laughs) No bitch slaps. We want to make the decision before we get to that point. It's so well said. And that's, that's actually the part I think that separates the people who you see moving forward because they're getting to that point of awareness. They're taking the action and not waiting for the bitch slap to come every single time. We've all had one or two. I don't know that we can avoid that, but a hundred percent. Yeah. And I think the other part of it too, is like, when I look at you, I think you're such a creative person. Mm. I think a lot of your gifts and your superpowers are, you're very consistent. Every time I see you and interact with you, you're like the same level of sparkly. Mm. And I think also within your business and what, what you do, there's a high level of creativity infused in that. There's a high level of like curating experiences. And then also like, I think you're so dialed in regards to your community, your network, your, like the people that you have in your life. And Mm. think about that level of what you do isn't you in spreadsheets. Yeah. Like your gift isn't you in a Google Doc or in Slack or anything like that. So it's really owning that. Mm-hmm. And then also think about think about everything else that's going to be leaking your energy that will inhibit you from doing those things that you know are your inherent gifts. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that's the best way to kind of assess yeah. and figure out like okay, what how do I really double down on yeah. what I'm good at? And again, what Lindsay's good at isn't necessarily what Cheryl down the street's going to be like, you're your own unique sunflower. Yeah. So it's about like your energetic imprint of like what you're good at, like truly like your inherent gifts. I think you're in that from what I see, from my view, you're in it yeah. very more potently. than ever now. I feel that. More than ever. And how does, how has that felt for you? Like, do you, do you feel that sense of it's like what we were talking about earlier. Do you, do you feel that sense of guilt with being like, it's, no, it's almost anymore. like, it's that, almost like letting I got it, rid of that. <laughs> Great. It's like letting it be too good to be true. Like this is what you get to do and this is how you get to live. And I think going back to some of our previous conversations too, it was having to look at the underlying pattern of where the guilt came from in the first place, this attachment to 
being raised in a culture where it was like I, I didn't deserve the success unless I was working really hard mm-hmm. for it. I'm in more flow than I've ever been in my life. And it's allowed me to go into this season of even deeper healing where I'm uncovering even more. It's about to get even more flowy where I think I'm going to be like soft and in my daddy season at the same time. I'm going to be a soft daddy. I love that. <laughs> love a soft daddy. It's like dad bod. But like dad bod. <laughs> But for the corporate environment, I don't know. We just went off the rails here, but it feels so good. I have more space than I've ever had. The business is thriving in ways that it's never been able to thrive. And I don't think I was ready for it to thrive yet. I had to get to the point where I work through the, the, it's almost like the subconscious reprogramming, the nervous system stuff. I've been talking about this a lot to be able to hold more Mm -hmm. and to be able to hold more. I've had to shed some things that, I couldn't hold it all together and hold everyone together and still allow this entity to thrive. And it's been a messy process. I've shared a lot of it on the podcast, but I think it it was exactly the process I needed in order to really root into those lessons because I feel free now. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I could, I could feel that with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of my, one of my healers told me this a while back, but she, she said, she was like, your business is always going to be a direct reflection of your internal state. If you internally, if you're tired, if you're exhausted, if you're lost, if you're confused, if you're really go perpetuating certain wounding, that is going to be very evident with how you're building your business. And that applies to your relationships as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so true. So I think for you, perhaps that's like knowing that you're in the state in your life where like the way like your way of being Mm. is the cleanest version of you it possibly is and then that's now being reflected by everything that you do yeah and so much of what you shared has been the process I've been through in my own way and I love how you kind of keep bringing us back to that your process and mine might mirror each other but they're individual and they've been this gradual process that's built on one thing after another over time and I'm just like really grateful to drop in with you at this stage because same, I feel like such a different energy from you. I feel that in myself. And I think having people like you in my world that are expanders and reminders that that's ultimately the actual feeling I'm looking for. It's not the external stuff that I thought was going to bring me joy and fulfillment and peace. That's an inside job. And then it just so happens that the business actually thrives more on the other side. Mm, beautiful. So good. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, where can people find you, connect with you if they want to interact with any and kind of tell us the two different sides of your world, because you do really incredible work. And I mean, I've been a client. I can speak personally from the branding side and the, and the website development. It's like, I want to actually, I'm going to pause and speak to this because just like, as I have you inter- kind of talk about what you do, when people feel the energy of what powerhouse women is, Part of my creative process, my intuitive process is anyone who touches any element of the brand. I mean, my amazing podcast team that's here today, the people who are touching anything that we put out into the world, they give a shit about the work that we're doing. And you are such a high give a shit factor type of company. You take on projects that you genuinely feel that way about. And I can only imagine that on the other side of the work that you're doing with women, it's the same. So I mean, I didn't get paid anything to say that, but that's she really didn't. like <laughs> how it feels to be a client of yours. And it's part of what helps me put the message out into the world that I want people to receive because I'm not gifted in the things that your team is gifted in, but I need those people to help me bring my vision like fully into reality. So- Amazing. Everything you just said is so palpable. It's like every every detail, I hate to use the word brand, but every detail of the things you put out there, that's a part of your perception. Like when you're up on stage, your outfits, Mm. your team, like everything is so dialed because you have a certain level of discernment. And then you also have a level of truly understanding yourself and then holding that standard for your vision. That's what makes a visionary. Yeah. And you hold that so well. And also you're the type of client that we love working with because you have that vision. You have two things. One, subjectively really great vision, (laughs) like in taste with aesthetic. And then two, like a true understanding of purpose of really like knowing that like you're building something bigger than you 
and like that heart and that essence. And that's essentially like we only work with clients like that. We yeah. like literally only work with clients that me and my whole team, because they're, they're engagements that I want to bring them in. I want my team is like my family. I want them to love and adore everyone that we work with. Yeah. Love their mission. And uh, somebody told me this a while back, but within p- people's careers, it's typically one of three things that they're drawn to. It's mm. either the people that they work with, the mm. money they're getting paid, or the product or service that they're putting out there. Really? So that's something with Whoa. like my team. I'm like, I want them to love all their cl- all of our clients, and I want them to like love the interactions. So. Yeah. Anyways, that was a whole tangent. But no, it's true. It just it speaks to the why behind what you do, and I think it it already starts to speak to like if someone's listening and they're intrigued, they want to get in touch. Tell them a little bit of the ways that you like. What sandbox can they come and play with you in? Yes, come come play, guys. Any sandbox, but uh, yes, as Lindsay said, we have Lumina Creative. It's my creative agency. We do branding and websites for personal brands um, and. I also support female creatives with building their businesses and building it around alignment. So a lot of the work that I do, it's typically 50% mindset work, somatic work, nervous system work, and then creating the business Mm. of ease. So I don't work with women that want to build a massive business. Mm. I work with ones that, like I said, like they want, they're interested in the self-discovery and they want to build something sustainable and fun. And something that really allows them to like sit within their genius. So yeah. it's like my absolute favorite thing in the world to do. Uh, and what accountability for you to keep learning more and more about yourself on your journey to do that. I feel like half the things I create, it just becomes accountability for me to keep living Babe, up to yes, that. You yes. know, in the same way. This is what I love about, I, I feel this for you and mm. I also feel this for me. I feel like we're essentially bringing people along on the ride with us mm-hmm. cuz we're constant it's a constant state of evolution and for me I'm constantly in a state of actually not constantly I take pauses from this but I I want to get 80, to 20 people 80, 80 20, 20. <laughs> I want to get to understand myself more mm-hmm. and I want to just dip my toes into different modalities mm. of yeah any any ways that I can improve myself from like communication or um limiting beliefs or things within relationships or very or very clear things that I could apply to my business so I think I love just opening that up to other people and allowing Mm. them allowing them to go on the ride with me yeah where is the best place for people to find you where's your internet sandbox Hmm. I'd say internet it probably probably the Instagram my handle or my agency's handle yeah both We'll drop them both in the in the comments too. But if you want to screenshot all of the morning beverages yes. like me and all the biohacking things, it's Anna doing things, yes. right? Yes. And then Lumina Creative is at the mm-hmm. agency. So we'll make sure to link all of that. But I want to kind of wrap up with this one final question. And it's especially a fun one to get to ask like women who are my actual personal friends because it allows me to be the hype girl that I was born to be. But it's an opportunity just to like celebrate yourself and celebrate yourself for something big or small that maybe you realize you kind of just glossed over and you didn't take the moment to appreciate it at the time. But we just call it a powerhouse moment. So Mm. a recent powerhouse moment that you want to celebrate if I asked you, like, what do you want to celebrate right now? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, recent powerhouse moment for me, I would say uh, probably the the retreat. I, I threw a retreat for my uh, mastermind. Um, Which is not a small undertaking. Yeah. <laughs> Let and, me tell you. And you're like the queen of in-person stuff. From what I've I do seen. love it. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, yeah, it, I'm not going to, that's like, I'm I not going to be shy. That actually is my <laughs> when I think genius. of you, I think yeah. of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, just that being a new venture for me doing yeah. the in-person stuff and kind of going against my story of the things that dream me mm. and seeing the amount that I love throwing events and the amount that I love throwing retreats. And then now having like planting the seed for myself about how I can do that more and how I can create my own flavor of, in, I don't even want to call them events, but in-person things. Experiences. Yes. That's really what it is. You're curating an experience. Yeah. That can kind of merge all like things that I like doing. And then also people that I like putting together in a room. Cause it really is. It's the alchemy of all of it. Yes. You're creating the experience, but it is almost like an 80, 20. It's like, I'll bring 80%, but the 20 is the leaving room for magic and seeing the alchemy of the people coming together. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I like, acknowledge you so so big for that because it's it's not a small undertaking and you can feel the magic that is infused into everything that you do and it's been so fun to watch you on this ride thanks babe likewise